Say the Lord is good. Say the Lord is good. Say the Lord is the one, Say the Lord is the one from above. Thank you. Let's have our seats. Thank you, worship team. Let's clap for them. Let's clap, clap, clap for them. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Say I'm blessed above all. Are we blessed, people of God? Are we blessed? It's the day that the Lord has made. There's no way that you cannot rejoice in it. One has to rejoice without choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I love you, Jesus. Say, I'm blessed above all. Say, I'm truly blessed from above. Tell your neighbor, say, I believe in him. Say, I believe in him. And nothing can take this glory from me. Nothing can take his glory from me. I believe in him. Hallelujah. Do you love Jesus Christ? Jesus says, I am the door. He says, I am. I am. I'm the door or I am the gate. I am the, the gate. But now we shouldn't forget what God said in Genesis chapter 1. He says, let's make men in our image. Let's make men in our image. Image. Let them rule over the beds, over the beach, over the everything. Let them subdue the earth. Are we clear? Let them be made in his image. So let us make men in our own image. Do we love Jesus Christ? So that's why now we miss a lot of blessings in our life. Jesus says in John 10, I'm the gate. And he also says, I've come that you might have life. I've come that you might have what? Life. Are we clear? Are we clear? I've come that you might have life. Now, Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1 says, Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us leave aside every weight, every hindrance, and look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. What shocks me is in chapter 24, Matthew, he says in chapter 20, 24, he says, um, Don't do what they do. Only take what is good. But now what shocks me again, the Apostle Paul comes in Philippians 4 verse 9 says, whatever you've seen in me, it means do what I do. Whatever you've seen me or learned from me, put it into practice so that God can be with you. So if the Apostle Paul comes, life comes to you. Because Jesus says, I've come that you might have life. So never postpone the blessing. If Jesus says, I'm the door, I can also say I'm the door. What does it mean? If he lives in me and I suppress him, if he lives in me and I don't allow anything like the word to penetrate me, to reveal him, if I don't do that, then my doors are closed. If I refuse to believe his word, if I refuse to believe what he says, I remain closed. If I refuse persecution, if I refuse hardships, who will open his stripes? That's why Galatians 6, the Apostle Paul says, Beware what you do to me. I bear on my body the marks of, of who? So it's no longer my body. It's Christ who is alive. Are we clear? It's Christ who is. So the Apostle Paul, when I stand and speak, it's no longer I. It's, it's who? It is, it is Christ. So in the olden days, God used to speak to our forefathers in and by through the prophets. But in the last of the days, he speaks to us in the presence of the Son. So who am I to stand and speak as a prophet? I want you to say this. Who am I to say I speak as an apostle? 
Who am I I'm, it's, will come, to come and say I speak as a pastor? So in the last of these days, he speaks to us in the person of the Son, Christ himself, who is the exact same imprint of the Father. So the exact same image of the Father. So Genesis 1 says, let's make men in our image. So I'm not going to rob myself and appear like an apostle and appear like a prophet and appear like what? Listen, if you appear like a title, you appear with a position that God does not respect. What God respects is his image. What God respects is his image. God respects his own image. So they say we heal the sick in your name, we cast out demons in your name, we prophesy in your name. He said, I never knew you because when he comes, he does not see himself. He does not see himself. So if he's the gate, become the gate so that you can enter and he also enters. You cannot enter without him entering. You cannot enter without him entering. So God addresses you as gate as well. Okay. I'm saying God addresses you as gate. Jesus says, I'm the door or I'm the gate. So God comes to you. If you look like him, if we carry that image, he says, hi, you gate. So if you become such a gate that has been opened, when they look at you, you can say, do what I do. Whatever you've seen in me or learned from me, go put it into practice if you want God to be with you. But if you don't want God to be with you, don't imitate what I do. So the Apostle Paul comes and says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Okay. Are we clear? Who is he? Because some people, is, Jesus said, don't do what they do. But when he comes, he says, practice whatever you've seen in me or learned from me. So how do we have such evidence in Galatians chapter 4 from verse 12? He says, the reason why I came to preach the gospel to you, it was because of the sickness. He was not sick, but the sickness became a message. It became a reason for him to go and preach the gospel. So we have pastors, prophets, evangelists who are sick. They are sick, but the sickness is not the reason. Come on. That doesn't mean you will not sick. You will get sick. But what is the reason? What is what? He says, the reason why I came to preach the gospel is was because of this sickness. And when you received me, you didn't receive me as Paul. You didn't receive me as the apostle. You received me like an angel. You received me like Christ. So I want you to see the difference between when people say you make yourself God, they make you an idol, and when you come and they see Christ. Are we clear? Are we clear? Are we clear? If you want to see Peter disappearing completely, you must see his face shining like the sun. There are manifestations which people don't experience. I want us to get this. If you are the door, I want us to get this. Remember Revelation chapter 3, we read it yesterday. From verse 19, behold, I stand and knock at the door. Meaning you. And those who open, I will come in. I will eat and drink with them anew in the kingdom. Are we clear? Are we clear? Behold, I stand and knock at what? At the door. Now, if you read Mark chapter 16, he appeared to many. First Corinthians Chapter 15, in many separate ways, he appeared to more than 500 people at the same time. And you must get it. He says, in many separate ways, he appeared to more than 500 people at the same time. Right now, say it's 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock now, appearing to more than 500 people all over the world at the same time. But when he appeared to them, I wanted to get this, but when he appeared to them, he appeared to them in many separate ways. He can come in this form to this one, to this one in this form. Now, there are things that we receive as individuals. So the many formations of Christ when they come, I want you to an individual. Behold, I stand and knock. Today, I'm like this. I enter as a lion. Today, I'm like this. I enter. So as long as your door is opened, 
In many separate ways he appears. Now, that's why now he says, you do everything I've done. Even greater things. Even greater things. And you must understand, in greater things is also his appearance. In many separate ways. In many ways. Because some of the things that happen, it's not us, it's Christ. It's Christ at work. So if it is Christ at work, he comes in many separate ways. So it depends whether you open your door for what you see or not. Because some people, the other way, it may be a different way from the way he came to you previously. Because it's a strange way, you begin to say, no, this one, I'm afraid I will lose that kind of apostle friend. I will lose that bishop. I will lose that prophet. I will lose that. Because of this one, it's too much. But have you ever seen on the throne how it looked like? It looks like this. You see men. You see an ox. You see an eagle. You see a lion. And then it doesn't mean all of them an ox, a lion, a man. Now, on the same appearance, on the same appearance, really correctly, it's man, lion, ox, are we clear? And eagle, four creatures before the throne. Then it says, in the midst of them, the most important thing that we see in the midst of them is the weight. It's the weight. In the midst of them is the and, and the word changes into anything. The word changes into anything. So in many separate ways, he appears. He can come this way to you today, knocking, you're welcome. The next time he knocks, you're welcome. Do you know because of others, you can stop what you're supposed to do because of that kind of appearance? I will clear. Today, men of God... You cannot receive from him without boldness. You have to keep that boldness. No matter what the world will say, no matter. As long as they say whatever, you know you progress. You are far ahead of what they say. They are far behind. Because I heard some other time, it was, it was an interview. They say, what is happening with these people? Because they keep on showing this. They keep on doing this. It's news about them every time. What's happening was, are we behind because some of the things are far ahead of you to an extent that you cannot even investigate. You cannot even define them until you believe in them and welcome the formation of Christ. So in many separate ways, he appeared to them. What if we have one, two, three people? This one, he appeared in a different way than this one, and this one in a different way than this one. Will this one accept the appearance of this one? Are we clear? Why am I able to accept your appearance? Because there are many, when I begin to say God is going to use it this way, and God shows me a vision about you. And, and, and all of you, I don't see the same, but from all of you, I say it's Christ. Are we clear? Are we clear? So, meaning, I'm not the one coming knocking. In other words, you are knocking. Will I accept what God is doing in your life? So if I don't accept it, you're not my son. I'm saying the door is open. We don't have a gate. You get it? So I need to accept you. That's why as a son, you must check as a son. Whatever happens, I stand. I don't care how great men would say about my son. I stand and say, he is my son. The spirit that is in him is the spirit of Christ. So I'm not shaken by experience. It is not age or experience that speaks, but it is the spirit who speaks. So why should I reject what is in the sun? Moreover, when it comes from me and when it goes to the sun, it finds what the sun originally has as unique as he is the sun. So why should I not be bold and begin to say, he is my son, I love my son. Prophet, you are wrong. You are wrong. You are in the wrong. What would hinder me from saying that? That I'm not ready to deny the formation of Christ. I'm not ready to deny a generation that God is bringing up. When there's a knock on the door, will I welcome that stranger? If I welcome a stranger, it confirms me as a strange generation. 
So what is strange cannot reject what is strange. It comes to where we can say God does not cast God out. God cannot cast God out. So there are many because you refuse the formation or many separate ways of Christ. You are busy trying to cast out Christ who is looking at you. And he does not react. He does not react like your enemy, a demon. So you expect Christ to react like a demon. Are we learning something? So when God knocks at the door, he will raise somebody unexpected. Come on. Okay. If you are depressed, you are, you know, thinking that, Ugh, I won't make it, there's too much pressure and everything. But when God comes, you know what he says? He says, lift up your head, O you gate. He says, lift up your head, O you gate. Revelation 3, he knocks at the door. When you open, it means you change the way you think. Repentance means to change the way you think. When you repent, you open the door. He says, I come in. I will come in and eat and drink with you. I knew in the kingdom on my father's throne. Are we clear? Are we clear? Now, what is happening in Luke 22? In Luke 22, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer eat and drink with this you now. This is the last supper. Now, no longer doing anything. So, the next time what happens, I will eat and drink with you anew in the kingdom. So, the door has to go and be opened. They've not yet entered. They've not yet entered. That's why when you see the book of Revelations, to show that John has not yet entered, he still describes Jesus in Revelation chapter 1 as I saw his hair like, his eyes like. When you see his reality, you faint. Before, he says he was like, he was like, when Jesus appeared, he fainted as though dead. Because his real appearance has not yet appeared to him. So when the new formation comes, he faints as though dead. But now to show that the door has been closed, now it's still closed. When it goes to Revelation chapter 4, I heard the voice like a word trumpet. Now the voice. And when he heard the voice like a word trumpet, when he responds to the voice, he says, all of a sudden I was in the spirit. Why? I saw a door standing opened. Meaning out of the door came out that first voice. So this is the first voice I know. I've heard many voices, but this one, I know this voice. So they hear me by my voice. They hear me. When I knock, they know it's me. No matter the formation, no matter the appearance, no matter I come this way or this way. Now, they know me by my voice. The problem is people made blunders for not knowing by their voice. You see, many manifestations, miracles, signs and wonders can happen. But did you go to the voice first before you criticize the miracle? Yeah. I repeat, I repeat. There are many who still struggle with the voice. And there are many who are not his sheep. They do not belong to his pen because they don't hear his voice. They first look at the appearance, at the formation. Because in many separate ways, he appeared to them, but was the voice the same? So the knocking on the door depends on the voice. Forget about the appearance. Welcome. He says, remember, John 10, he says, I'm the gate. And they hear me by my voice. Revelations chapter 3. Behold, I stand and knock at the door. So when you open, what formation do you see? Are we learning something now? He says they hear me by my, by my, by my voice. So there are many sheep who are not of his pen. They are goats, in fact. There are many who still struggle with the voice. That's why you run for the gift before you hear the voice. When the teaching comes, you can hear that this is not according to the word of God, but you will see the gift. You will see what? The gift. And many now you stand. Uh, when you teach, you are in a hurry to perform. So 
So that's how many says I'm known by this. And that's how you speak about each other. Ah, that one with deliverance. That one with healing. That one with prophecy. You know them by the gifts. But Jesus says, they know me by my voice. In the last of these days, he speaks to us in the person of the Son. Christ himself. He says, he's, the main thing that is concerning, it's concerning the way we speak. In the olden times, God used to speak to our forefathers. In the, it doesn't say in the olden times, God used to heal our forefathers this way. In the olden times, God used to cast out demons to our forefathers this way. In the olden times, God used to prophesy to our forefathers. No, speaking. So the most problem is people struggle with identifying and knowing the voice. That's why many today are deceived by the gifts. And that's how we see a carcass being formed. And that's how we see many change and become in the formation of vultures. And the moment they become vultures, they think they eat what is right. Ah, that one with healing. That one with deliverance. Come on, let me teach. I'm born in this generation, not be born without boldness. I'm BB. BB come bold, boldness. Born boldness. Born with boldness. Do we love Jesus Christ? Look, if I give offense, don't worry. If I've already given you offense, I've dealt with you, I've closed your door. Your weapons are within you. They will destroy you. They won't come to me. I'm still going to leave. I'll reach 400 years old. Don't worry. But, but I will learn something. They will learn something. The moment you give offense, you have closed their doors. No matter what they say, don't worry. It's, a, it's an enemy or an animal or a, 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 a giant, a beast which has been dealt with at the cross. Because the shepherd does not go behind the sheep. He walks in front of them. He leads them. If he leads them and they know him by his voice, if he kills the lion, he leaves it there. If he kills the snake, he leaves it there. He kills everything, he leaves it there. So those who follow him, they don't know him by what he killed. They know him by his voice. So if it's by the voice, you go through. So whatever challenge that comes, it's an enemy which has already been dealt with. How do we see that it's already dealt with? David, as a shepherd, he kills the lion and the bear. Now, when he meets with Goliath, he does not say, Goliath, I've killed the lion. And later I met with the lion, the spirit raised the standard and I killed. Now with you, now the spirit has to raise the standard. Jesus is the same yesterday to the f and forever. <laughs> now, he's, I mean, I just want to show you, if you have him, the same. I'll go somewhere. Mysteries can be opened, but as long as he's there with you. Now, David says to Goliath, Goliath, I've killed the lion and the bear, and I'm going to make you the same. So that which killed the lion is the same power that killed the bear, and it's the same power that's going to... I don't have to shake because he dealt with by the same time, that at the same time, when he laid that anointing on me, what I'm going to experience tomorrow, the same grass anointing will deal with it. The same petrol anointing, there's no need to change. The only thing is to welcome many separate ways as he appears unto you. Are we getting it? Are we getting it? Are we getting it? Are we getting it? We getting it? That's why I like it. Some acknowledge it, but publicly they can't. Because you are afraid of your colleagues. You are afraid to lose someone. Are we clear? But I want us to get this. When the door is being opened, meaning your door, if he enters, you realize that you carry treasure that you were not aware of. Are we good, Samuel? Because what I love about the Revelation 3, when he knocks, 
He doesn't say when I come in, let's change furniture. Let's change the throne, let's change everything. He says, I will come in, I will eat and drink with you. So the moment you repent and come in, you realize that there has been a kingdom within you. There's been a kingdom. That's why the scribes and Pharisees, people who criticize him, were the ones who were asking him about the kingdom. He says, when they say, there it comes, there it comes, he says, don't believe them. The kingdom is within you. The problem is, you don't open your door for me to come in. Romans, I mean, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, he says, but you sought to kill me. Verse 31, what did he say? He was talking to the believing Jews. If he's speaking to the believing Jews, they believe in him. But he tells them, but you sought to kill me. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Now he says, you sought to, but we know, they say we know Abraham. If we know Abraham, he says, yes, but you don't do what Abraham did. But you sought to kill me. How do you kill me? He says, when my weight comes to you, it means it comes in and there's abortion of the weight. I mean, people who believe in you, they listen to you. The problem is hearing the weight. The problem is knowing him by his voice. He says, I speak to you. They are, belie they are believers. They believe in him. But he says, but you sought to kill me. How do you want to kill you? Are we, are we going somewhere? You abort my word. Meaning when the word comes in, there's abortion. It comes in, it goes out. Just like the word that comes and you make it ineffective. It doesn't work. There are many who receive the word when they go. There's no performance of what they received. Why? That's why when you spoke about the parable of the sower, he says, now many receive it with joy. But when the worries and the cares of this world come, the worries about money, the worries, he says the word is gone. There are many who receive. You must bring a testimony next Sunday about what happened with the word that you received during the week. What happened with the word that you received during? So I'm going to say to everybody, lift up your heads, O oh you gates. So remember, the first time on a Torah, a lot of people look at me funny when I said, you are the gate. When you come, people must have life. Because springs of living water does not, that do not open from heaven. They open from within you and out of the belly we see. It's the river of what? Of life. Life for who? Is it for you or for people you meet? So when you meet them, you have come. I'm the gate. So I've come that you might have life. So if I rob you and not show you everything I've received, I'm not giving you life. Okay? It's funny again. And I hear God opening deep into me now. I want us to get this. Read, okay, Psalms 24. Read Psalms 24. Psalms 24. Psalms 24. Psalms 24. Psalms 24. Huh? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Come on, can you read it quickly? Let's run, run on it and maybe we need to finish quickly. Read. The earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness of it. All, everything belongs to God. Uh -huh. The world and they who dwell in it. The world and they who dwell in it. Uh -huh. For he has founded it upon the seas. He has founded it upon the seas. Uh -huh. And established it. And established upon, it upon. Upon the currents and the rivers. The currents and the rivers. Uh huh. Who shall go up into the mountain of the Lord? Who shall go up into the mountain of who? Of the Lord. Who shall go up in the mountain of the Lord? Uh -huh. Or who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall stand in his holy place? Yes. He who has clean hands. He who has clean hands. Uh -huh. And a pure heart. And a pure heart. Remember we talked about purity. Be pure as I'm pure. Because with a pure heart, if I minister to you without purity, I'm going to leave you with attachments. But if I carry the purity in me, if Christ enters in me, when I minister to you, it's no longer I, it's Christ. But with a gift only, know that it's with attachment that I minister to you. 
Because many, now you must get it. Remember First, first Timothy chapter 5, verse 22. What does it say? It says, do not be hasty in laying on of hands, lest you share one another's sins. So do not be quick in laying on of hands. Because if you're quick, when you share sins, somebody open a door for something different than Christ. Someone open a door for someone different than Christ. So then you're left with attachments. Do not be quick even in reinstating an expelled offender. Someone is expelled when they come back, you quickly put them back to their position. Many are going to share because you open a door for their. You get it? So he says, be pure as I'm pure. Don't be ashamed to say, wait, wait a bit. When a person comes, all you rich people here, when you come here, you know you have to submit. You have to, you have to, you have to submit. And it's without choice. This is the spirit of God. It's not your level. God is not a respect of men's position. When you come here, you are all souls. There's no difference between a soul which has money and soul that doesn't have money. You are souls. Okay? Okay. So you don't come and dictate. When you give your money, I control it. As the spirit leads me, I control it. Okay. Are we going somewhere? So we must understand, if you know him by his voice, the voice of God is paramount in our lives. Now, I want you to repeat that part. I want us to get this. For who shall go up into the mountain of the Lord? Uh -huh. Or who shall stand in his holy place? Yes. He who has clean hands. He who has clean hands. And a pure heart. And a pure heart. Who has Wait. not. And a pure heart. Are we clear? Now, David allows this to happen in his life. He sins. Psalm 51. He says, Lord, forgive me according to multitudes of mercies. Forgive me according to your unfailing love. Wash me with the high soap. Are we clear? Do not take away Holy Spirit from me. Do not cast me out of your presence. Let me remain in your presence. Are we clear? All of a sudden, this man, while he repents, we see that he's a prophet. How does he know about the Holy Spirit? Don't take away your Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is promised in the New Testament. He knew how to open his door, even though he sinned. Immediately, God is excited. He enters. Now, all of a sudden, he says, create in me a clean heart and purify me so that I may worship you. So, wait. Create in me in a clean heart and, 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 and purify me so that I may enter. So I cannot worship you if I don't enter. So enter his gates with thanksgiving. So immediately he begins to enter God's gate. And after he enters, all of a sudden he begins to say, grant me the willing mind so that I can be sustained. Because if that willing mind is not with me, I won't be sustained. I'm going to sin again. So I need something that will sustain me. So that when you go and teach sinners, I will not enter them. They have to enter me. Oh, I don't know if somebody get this. I don't have to enter them. They have to enter me. So, so that I can teach sinners your ways and sinners will return to you. So sinners will enter me. So when they enter me, they enter you. So whatever you have seen in me or learned from me, put it into practice and the God of peace shall be with you. So I'm the gate. I've come. I've come that you might have life. Are we clear? Do we get it now? So grant me the willing mind. So if I don't have the willingness, I will not be sustained. Are we clear? Do we love Jesus Christ? So if I have that will in mind, I will be sustained. And I will be able to teach sinners. Some people cannot teach sinners. Instead of teaching them, they join them. And it's all because of the voice. If it's not his voice, you must be teaching something apart from his voice. And it's the law. It's Moses and the law. And when you teach Moses and the law, the power of the law was weakened by their sins. So you stand there while they're weakening you. Because of closing the door and not allowing him to enter. Right there? Are we blessed? Are we hearing this? Come on, let this, let this take you out of trouble, out of sin as well. Because pastors, you know. Prophets, you know. Apostles, you know. And especially where there's money. 
There's so much competition. You compete. You are full of jealousy. You hate each other more than the world hates each other. You fight. You can plan. You can do anything to let your brother go down. You can do anything in your power. Don't worry. If I give you offense, I've already dealt with the weapons. Are we going somewhere? Are we going somewhere? Especially where there are people. Because you no longer love Jesus. You love people. You love people too much. That's why you fight for people. Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? So how can you feed them if you don't love me? So you fail to feed them because you don't love God. You are in love with the gift that you have. That's why you are so much concentrated on your gift, trying to check how to enhance it in order to draw people because you love people. Jesus says, do you love me? If you love me, you'll be able to feed them. People are not fed with purity. <laughs> Who will come to the mountain of the Lord is the one with clean hands and a pure heart. So if you love me, feed them. What do you feed them with? What do you feed them with? Do you love me? Take care of them. How do you take care of them? How do you take care of them? The problem is you love people. You are so in love with people. Anything else that happened, trying to hear somebody, placards every day, doing a crusade somewhere, fight, who's this one? You make means you try everything in your power to stop that to happen. And the first thing you say, it's Satan, even though you don't know. And when you criticize it, you know there's communication in your mind, at the back of the mind. At the back of your mind, it says, I'm stupid. <laughs> Do we love Jesus Christ? So who will come to the mountain of the Lord? The one with clean hands and a pure heart. Once you feed them, we feed them with purity. You minister healing, you don't leave them with attachments. You minister prophecy, you don't leave them with attachments. You minister deliverance, you don't leave them with attachments. You minister everybody watching, you don't leave them with question marks. Because today some people leave people with question marks. Why did he say this about this anointing when it goes on? And because you saw that you failed, you can't even clear the air. You can't even tell people that I did what is wrong. You're like those during the 90s when they taught about triple six and labels of clothes that you wear, food that you eat every day. Books were written. They taught you about the, the computers that are coming, technology that is coming. They say Satan is near. And they say 2000 when it comes, you'll see the beast. But after 2000, is anybody reading those books today? They never repented. They never said we are wrong. Now today when you buy clothes, do you check labels? Now today you know he's by his voice. You know that he said whatever you touch is blessed. Yeah. That's why he said pray for every food that you eat. The problem is not opening the door for the voice or not knowing him by his voice. When he knocks, open. Read. For who shall go up into the mountain of the Lord? Yes. Or who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands. He who has clean hands. And a pure heart. And a pure heart. Who has not lifted himself up to falsehood? Who has not lifted himself up to falsehood? Or to what is false? Or to what is false? Nor sworn deceitfully. Nor sworn deceitfully? He shall receive blessing from the Lord. He and shall receive blessing from the Lord. That's when you can stand and speak and say, I receive this directly 
from the Lord himself, not from any man. Galatians chapter 1, I received this gospel directly from the Lord himself. If I, not Paul, I, if I, not Paul, if I or an angel, or any other angel, preaches a different gospel than the one that I preach, not Paul. He said, let him be a cast. He said, let him be a cast. For this, I directly received it from the Lord himself. So if you preach a different one, how will you take care of them? Because it's not pure. How will you feed them? He says, let him be a cast. So there are many who are cast because it's not the voice of God. Okay. Okay, let me read it so that everybody can get it because some say this false prophet, you know. You know, you, you, you know, you know. If he has spoken, no problem. In our language, we say, So the word will not come back. Only your finger will return. So if you have spoken, if you have spoken, forget, it's forever. Say, so I love you, Jesus. Say, so I'm blessed above all. Say, so I'm blessed above all. Say, so I'm truly blessed from above. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Let's read this. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not from human origin. I did not receive it from any man. Nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by the revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people, and I was extremely zealous for the tradition of my fathers. But when God who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son, to reveal who? To reveal who? The appearance now happened. He revealed his son. He revealed his son in me. Uh, if you get it, you'll scream. <laughs> he revealed his son where? 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 So the kingdom is within you. So there's someone there you're not aware of. So to reveal his son where? In me, so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. My immediate response was not to consult any human being. It was not to consult any human being. It was not to consult any human being. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. You see, there's some things, there's some appearances to you. When they happened, there's no need even to consult anybody. If I say, my son, don't go and see that man, don't go there. So when the son makes a mistake, you come back and say, no, fine, it's good. It's already happened. Something good is going to happen. But you are not supposed to go. If I say he will not understand what is in you. Because he's suffering. We don't consult with people when their appearance has happened. My immediate response was not to consult with any human being. Because if you consult when it's the appearance, the person you're going to meet becomes a human being. Is it not written in your Bible? He becomes a human being. The reactions, you won't even see the fruit of the Spirit.
It calls for boldness. I'm young, but let the Holy Spirit take over. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were repeated before I was. But I went into Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus. I went into Arabia. You know what is in Arabia? In the desert of Arabia, there's Mount Sinai. And there, that's where the Apostle Paul went. Mount Sinai, that's where uh, God met with Moses on top of the mountain. It's in Mount Sinai. And that's where Jesus met with the Apostle Paul, and Jesus gave him the body and the blood. He says, this is my grace. And when he gave him, it's the gospel that he directly received from the Lord himself. Later, I returned to Damascus. You understand? In Arabia, it's Mount Sinai. That's where God met with Moses. That's where Abraham took Isaac and went up the mountain to make a sacrifice. That's where he met a ram caught by its horn. And then God says, here is a sacrifice. That's where Jesus met, the sacrifice met with Paul. Are we getting the revelation now? Are we getting the revelation? Are we getting the revelation? Are we going somewhere? Now listen. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas, meaning Peter, and stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the of other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I'm writing you is not a lie. Some people you don't have to tell me that you, you have to tell them that you're not lying. Because whatever you say, they say, ah, he's lying. You know why he's saying that Peter, you, you met with Peter. Lying. Do you love Jesus Christ? Do you love Jesus Christ? Say love with Jesus. Say love with Jesus. Say love with Jesus. Come to verse 6. I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to different gospel. Let's clap for Jesus. Listen, verse 7, which is not really gospel at all. Which is not gospel at all. So when the knock on the door happens, which voice did you receive? How did you identify him? So we have to be doors. Get this. Say love with Jesus. Say love with Jesus. Listen, I repeat, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and attaining to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if, if we or an angel, we or an angel, not Paul, we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you. So we, Paul. Are we going somewhere? If it's another, it's not Paul. It must be Simon or Saul. Because it's not Peter, it's Simon. It's not Paul, it's Saul. Are we clear? So what we preach to you, it must be Christ. So it says, let them be under God's curse. So there are many, if you don't identify him by his voice, you are under God's curse. <laughs> it's in your Bible, eh? Okay? Because if people are identified by the gift today, many are under God's curse. He says, they know me by my voice. Did anybody get it now? Are we clear? Are we clear? Because if, he says, they know me by my voice. If it's not his voice, you are under God's curse. So when a stranger knocks at the door, when you repent, it's because you heard him by his voice. So he knocked a lot. He knocked a lot in Bethany. 
He knocked a lot in cities, many cities where he manifested miracles a lot. But because they did not repent, he ended up saying, woe unto you. Many miracles were performed there. But the issue is, many did not recognize the voice. In chapter 2, John, he performed many miracles. They clapped hands, they celebrated. It says, Jesus did not entrust himself to them because he knew their nature. They were human beings. He knew their nature. So, it's not everybody who can come and believe. Now, I saw a lot of nature. Many miracles being performed. People clapping hands, men of God. Some people kneel down, men of God, pray for me. Already God revealed him. You know what he's saying about you, but he comes and kneeling down and asking for a blessing. So, with me, don't say anything. Lay hand. They are under God's case. They go. They come. I'm trying to show how it works. Why do you come and confess? Why do you come and confess? You come and confess because you were looking for blessing, but you were saying this. You were barren, looking for a child, you got child. And I tell you that you're going to have more children, it's not one. All of a sudden, some confusion starts and you begin to say, no, his oils are from a snake. He sucks oils from, uh, uh, but they say from what? From, from aborted babies. They say from aborted babies, no? So you know from experience, you were with them. That's why you confessed. So, <laughs> so they suck oil, that's what. But now you have babies, you are barren because of that. Give me those babies because they are from snakes. He's using the spirit of a snake. So give me those babies. When you go, leave the babies. Leave the children. They are mine. And ask yourself why you cannot afford them. It's because you said something bad. Because what God gives you, God is a provision. He takes care of what he brings. So do we understand this? Be careful of being under God's cares because of not teaching the real weight. There are many who are under God's case because you can criticize a miracle, a miracle which is performed by the word, not from the gift. That's why John 10, when there's, well, Jesus comes and says, okay, they ask him, why do you put us in suspense? Are you the Christ? He says, I already told you. How did you tell us? What I was performing was speaking to you. He says, what I was performing was speaking to you. He says, the miracle signs on us I did were my credentials to prove that God is in me and I am in him. It shows that I'm from the Father. So you may criticize a miracle that comes by the way, and yet you misunderstand his voice. You misunderstand his voice. So they said, you kept us in suspense, but he says, I've been speaking to you always. What was I doing? This is to show that I'm from the Father. So they know me by my voice. When it goes on in the same John 10, he says his voice is the miracles. He says, that's how I spoke to you. Those miracles clearly show that God was performing the weight. God was performing the voice. So the voice that you hear, that's why it must be performed in you. If you have really opened the door, it must be performed in you. It must be seen that these people have been with God. Because when God rewards, he does not reward you in the secret. Yes, you go into your most secret place to shut the door. But when he rewards you, he's unseen, but he rewards you in the open. That's how people will get interpretation that you are from God. So Nicodemus got the interpretation. When he went to Jesus, he says, it shows you are from God for no one can do the things that you do. I'm a ruler, you are a ruler. I'm a teacher, you are a teacher. They, my colleagues, are teachers. They are rulers. But we all know that you're from God. How do we know they're from God? Because the only thing that causes us to identify people who are from God is when they do the things that no human being can do. So John speaks in John 3, 31, says, the one who comes from above is above all. And he speaks from above, not from the earthly point of view. So Nicodemus confirms it, says, what, there's no one that you can do that what you do. It shows that you're from God. 
So how do we see that someone is from God? And anyway, if someone is from God, what he does must be tested together with him. And if it continues, that's when we can see that, uh, let me show you, when you are persecuted, when you are tested, you get it? You get it? Remember it says heaven and earth will pass. What persecutes you is not even heaven. I want you to get this. It's not even heaven, you must get it. It's not even God. It's not from God. Let me put it that way. It's not from God. So what tests you, what persecutes It's what will pass, not what will remain. Because you already carry what remains in you. You already carry what remains. So what shall pass comes to test you. And if it fails to test you, it means it has passed. So heaven and earth will pass, but my weight shall remain. Because God performs that weight. So if you carry the kingdom, it's not the kingdom that tests you. It's heaven and earth that will test you. You get it? So what will pass shall test you. After testing you, when it has passed, it has failed. Are we clear? After it passed, then it has failed. Are we clear? Say love with Jesus. Say love with Jesus. Let's go on there. Go on. Psalm 24. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. It's not just blessing, it's also righteousness. Are we clear? It's also so all these things taken together shall be given unto so if the kingdom has come what tests you is what will pass what tests you is heaven and earth so when they pass you remain you do what you you remain let's go this is the generation description of those who seek him those this is the generation the description of those who uh -huh. Those who inquire of. Those who inquire of. And for him. Those who inquire of and for him. Uh -huh. And of necessity require him. Of necessity require him. Who seek your face. Who seek your face. Listen to this. Go on. Who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Uh -huh. Sila, pause and think of that. Sila, pause and think, meditate. So if you've been taught, go meditate. When you meditate, that's when we take a break. So eat. There's a time of enjoying the taste. Let's go. Now listen to this. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up your heads, O you. So... You are the gate. Go on. And be lifted up. You age abiding doors. You age abiding doors. Uh -huh. That the king of glory may come in. So now you gain confidence. Jesus, now you gain confidence. <laughs> Jesus said, I'm the door. So you can come and say, I'm the door. I'm the gate. So lift up your head, O oh you gates. Let the king of glory come in. So behold, I stand and knock at the door. So those who open, I will come in. So let the king of glory enter. Let the king of... So how does the king of glory enter? By his voice. So if you welcome a stranger, you are under God's curse. If it's another gospel, but when it's the real gospel, you received what remains. And whatever comes to test you, it's heaven and earth that shall pass. But my weight shall remain. Repeat that part. Lift up. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up. Be lifted up. You age abiding doors. You age abiding doors. That the king of glory may come in. So you remain. 
you will abide. You remain forever. So whatever comes, listen, if you're the gate, you lead also people. So when anything happens, it starts with you because you're the gate. So let them come and deal with you. Let them deal with you. Because you have to die. <laughs> let them deal with you. You, you, have, you have to die. Are we clear? Are we clear? So we've been crucified with him. I repeat. We were crucified with him. I don't, Roman says, come on. We were crucified with him. What did they do with the gate? He says, I laid down my life for, who? for the sheep. They hear me by my voice. So if anyone wants to attack the sheep, that's why the high priest prophesied in John 11. Everybody gave up. They say, we can't kill this man. He's too tough. We tried everything. We can't kill him. They gave up. The high priest stood up and prophesied an away. And he said, it is better for one man to die for everyone than for everyone to die for one man. So let us kill him so that he can die for everyone. So I laid down my life for the sheep. So now we were crucified with him. So the Lord will give you spiritual shepherds who will come to you. So persecution, hardships, everything happening. You were crucified with him. You were buried with him. You need to die. And you were co-raised with him. And when you are raised, you are tested by what is still alive. You are tested by what is still alive. So you are tested by that which shall pass. Check what tests you. How did it pass? Did someone die? Did someone give up and just stay and be quiet without correcting what they were doing? They died. They passed. So heaven and earth will pass, but my word shall remain. My word shall, shall remain. So, when you are in his presence, you'll be tested by what shall pass. If you know him by new voice, if allowed him to enter, what tests you will pass. What tests you will, will pass. Read there. Is it clear to everyone? Is it written in your books? Let's go. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up. And you, be lifted up. You age abiding doors. You age abiding doors. That the king of glory may come in. That the king of glory may come in. Revelation 3, he knocks. Where? Where? At the door. And who's the door? You. Are we clear? Let's go. Who is the king of glory? Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head. So whatever tests you. Whatever person. You understand this, no? Let's go. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Yes. Lift, lift up your heads, O you gates. Uh-huh. Yes. Lift them up. Yes, you lift them up. Uh-huh. You age abiding doors. You age abiding doors. That the king of glory may come in. That the king of glory may come in. Who is he then, this king of glory? Uh -huh. The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Pause and think of that. So you already know. If you go to 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. 
come before his presence with singing. Some versions will say enter the gates, ne? Huh? What's your vision? Oh, you don't know your vision. You're just reading your Bible. Well, you just read. Thank you for confirming. <laughs> What's your vision, Bishop? It's King James. What does it say? It says, you can hear the voice of a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> bishop, like <laughs> it, it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is uh, he. Oh. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that he has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Who are we? Who are we? The sheep. Uh huh. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Now you enter his gates. Who are you in Psalms 24? Who are you? There are people who follow you. So if you love the Lord, it's in terms of you becoming a gate as well. And allowing your gate to open. And when it opens, you'll be knowing how to feed them. You will know. Now, because if it's not like that, you walk behind the sheep all the time. You walk behind. Have you ever seen those who are local here? They walk behind the cows and the sheep. But a true shepherd walks in front of them. So that whatever trouble comes, it starts with the shepherd. So whatever has to happen says, I died for you. So we died with him. We were raised with him. And we now seated with him on the right hand of the Father. Now when the word has taken you there, whatever comes against you, it's everything that will pass. Are we clear? Revelation 7 says, there were four angels holding the four winds, four winds to destroy the earth, the sea, and the trees. The fifth angel appeared and said, whoa, do not harm the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees. Wait, let us first mark the born servants of our Lord Christ Jesus. So after marking them, you can release. Heaven and earth will pass, but my weight shall remain. The born servants are marked. The born servants are marked because they are holding the four wings. When they release them, they harm the earth. They harm, they harm the trees. They harm the seas. They harm the earth. But the born servants, everything shall pass, but they will remain. So if we are the gates, we have received him. So lift up your head, all you gates, and let the king of glory come in. And when he comes in, he eats and drinks with you and you in the kingdom. So how do we receive many formation in many separate ways? How do we receive them? The apostle Paul says the son was revealed in him. God revealed his son in him. But he still tells people, pray for me so that God can open a door into the mystery. So another mystery, Christ in a different form. Are we clear? Christ in a different from coming again. Are we going somewhere? Because he asked for that in Colossians chapter 4. And he says, and when you pray for me, let your speech be seasoned with salt. Now, in Ephesians chapter 6 again, in Ephesians chapter 6, he says, after everything stand now, you must do what? Hold your ground. And after that, put on the whole armor of God. What's the reason? He says, put the whole armor. After that, he says, pray for me with all kinds of prayers. Because people with the armor can pray in the spirit anyhow. So he says, you pray in the spirit 
Why? So that God can open these mysteries to me. So that when it comes, I know that it's him. Tomorrow, he's not like the way he appeared yesterday. It's another form. I know it's still him. I won't find myself criticizing and anointing. That's why there was division in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul says, I do not address you as spiritual people. I address you as unspiritual or non-spiritual people. Some say we follow Paul. Some say we follow Christ. Some say we follow King. Some say we follow Apollos. It's because they don't see them the same. Even those who follow Christ were wrong. Because they could not identify the Christ in Paul. They could not identify the Christ in Peter. They could not identify the Christ in Apollos. So that's why the Apostle Paul says the division. The reason for division is not being able to know him by his voice. Because you know by his voice, the appearance doesn't matter. He can come in a different miracle. He can come in this miracle, in this way, that way, that way, or the other. In many separate ways, he appeared to them. So I want to show you that many cannot get. That's why many run for impartations, and most of the impartation is an impression of a gift. But the appearance of Christ, I like it. In Colossians chapter 3, what does it say? We must appear with him. We must appear with, so we appear with him. So many appearances, appearing anywhere, anytime, anywhere in the world, God appearing with you. And a person say, you came to me, you said this, you said this. Jesus taking many forms. Remember, if I don't go, they will not know. They will not know. But if I go, I'll be with you. Are we clear? If I go, I'll be with you. When you minister, they will say, these people you can see, they're unschooled, but you can see that they've been with Christ. Are we clear? So if I go, it's important. That's why leaders are measured by their absence. So when I go, people will know that I've done the work. That's why if you're a minister and you train people, give all. <laughs> there are some organizations, if the leader goes, you can see that it will be finished. Because the leader doesn't impact or train anyone. No one is like the leader. The leader is like there alone. But some organizations, you can see, they produced people. You can see that if this one can go, we have some people who are strong there. Because the leader is interested in developing people. So God gave men gifts to be apostles, to be preachers, to be prophets, to be evangelists, to be five of them. The most important thing was for God to develop the church. So if those leaders go, the church is developed. That's why it's important to train people, to lead people. If your door is opened to train people, you are going to remain forever. <laughs> Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? You are going to remain forever. For leaders are measured by their absence. If he has entered into you, when he goes, he leaves. If I go in law, I'll be with you. I'll be with, with you. So as gates, we need to know and understand one thing. When he knocked, he has entered through the gate. Wherever we go now, beware what you do to me. I bear on my body the marks of Jesus Christ. So whatever you do to them, you do it to Christ. So many are under God's case. Why? They rather preach the law in order for you to have their mark. 
because they are afraid of persecution. That's Galatians 6. Rather, whatever they preach, you have their monk because they are afraid of persecution. So the apostle Paul says, beware what you do to me, I bear on my body the monks of Jesus Christ. So these monks, when you touch, you touch you, it's Christ. So let's make men in our image does not just come the way we think. Knocking at the door, he comes in and the appearance of Christ on you, the image of God. Because you allowed yourself to be opened. You allowed yourself to be opened. And once you're opened, he comes in. So whatever you do, it's by the Spirit. It's by the? It's by the Spirit. So as all of us understand now, we are at the gates. There was a sheep gate next to the pool. Go around, there are many pools. But go and stand next to the pool, the gate. Because it's the sheep gate. Those who have been going there, being healed, being prophesied, being delivered, they still observe the Sabbath. They are under the curse of the law. But those who have freedom are those who enter through the gate. So it says they will go in and out, but they will find pasture. They will find what? Pasture. So that's why the Apostle Paul now he says, look at me. Whatever you have seen in me or learned from me, put it into practice and God will be with you. <laughs> Meaning what I do, it's no longer I, but it's Christ. Whatever you see, that's why now demons can even see the same thing that I'm teaching right now. They say to the sons of Sceva, Paul we know, Christ we know, who are you? If they know Paul, they know Christ. They cannot know Paul without knowing Christ. They cannot know Christ without knowing Paul. To God be the glory. So let it be that when they look at you, wherever you go, remind them of Christ. I will let, let your life, that when you read the book of Acts, I begin to see, but this is what the church is experiencing. Because God has got a unique way of duplicating his stories in the Bible. So who has ever gone through this? You read, you check. But who's experienced? But it's like that church. It's like that man. Then you find your story in the Bible. Because Jesus was not persecuted by the world. Jesus was persecuted by his brothers, the Jews. I repeat. Jesus was not persecuted by the world. Jesus was persecuted by the Jews. Are we clear? When the prophet prophesied Paul, Agabus, when he prophesied Paul, he took his belt, says the owner of this belt will be like this will be taken like this. And he says he will be handed over into the hands of the Gentiles. And when you read the story go down, it's not the Gentiles. Who was persecuting Paul? It was the Jews. It was the church. It was the church. Don't be shocked if you are a true candidate it will be your fellow pastor, your fellow prophet, your fellow bishop. It will be your fellow prophet. It will be your fellow who's doing this, who's planning that against you. The world look for miracles. They go to Sangomas. They go to, they go to Limpopo. They're looking for what? For miracles. They come to you looking for what? For miracles. And miracles are for? So it's the believers who come and persecute you. Yeah. 
Miracle signs are for unbelievers, but for the believers who come. In John 8 from 31, it was the believing Jews. He told them straight about, you sought to kill me. Why? Because my word does not have entrance into you. You abhorred my word. That's how you kill me. How can somebody who believes in you kill you? So, be glad when you're persecuted by such. Your fellow brothers, your fellow apostle, your fellow bishop, your fellow, your fellow apostle, your fellow prophet. When they persecute you, they open a door. Ah. They open a door. Are we clear? When that stripes is open, when those stripes open, you will stand one day and say, I was beaten 40 minus 1. I was beaten 40 minus 1. So he cannot read Genesis up to Malachi and without hearing the new. So some read it and teach it while 39 is closed. Genesis to Malachi 39. But New Testament, it's not Matthew, Mark, James. You cannot count them. It's one. You cannot separate. In it, there's no division. In it, there's no what? There's no division. In it, there's oneness. In it, there's what? There's oneness. So I was beaten 40 minus one. So 39 has to be opened. So Jesus says, man cannot live on bread alone. He opens Deuteronomy 8. Are we clear? So a stripe, let it be opened. It's not the world, it's your brothers. That's why your brothers will even try to tell the world that, hey, don't. Because they know that the world goes for what? Miracle signs and wonders are for un unbelievers. So they were already believing in John 8, 31. But Jesus told them, but you sought to kill me. So it's important to understand what kind of gates are we? Are we clear? What kind of gates are we? If we have opened and the Lord has come in, the King of glory came. When you go to minister, the King of glory is with you. So Jesus has gone and sat down at the right hand of the Father after crucifixion. But when you allow your gate to be open, he lives in you. And God will perform his weight. That's Mark chapter 16. When they do what he told them to do, he was working along with them. And God performed his weight. So allow the gate to be opened by a stranger. Don't look at the stranger. Hear the voice. Hear the voice. Hear what? Because they know him by his voice. There are many, in many separate ways, he reveals himself. So when you go back, there's another way that he will reveal himself in your church. You will know that you received him. There's another, another way that he will reveal himself. You will know that he has entered. You will know that he has entered. So why am I teaching this? I'm teaching what lately has been happening with me. People seeing different appearances. People running away. You get it? So this is what I'm teaching. Because there are many. Some miss. The other part has got its own miracles. The other part has got the other appearance. Got some, so, many, so many things happening. What? Huh? They say they can't find you. They say they can't find me. Spiritual, physical. They can't find you. They were trained. They were trying to catch you, but they can't find you. They can't. They can't find you. They are trying. So we must understand these appearances. Are we clear? Because when it's in the physical, it's no longer you. It's Christ. Are we clear? So that's why one, you know, 
That's why I'm teaching this, so that you can understand. Are we clear? Are we clear? When those appearances happen, it goes, many a times, I prefer to welcome him. And when he comes, I know by the voice. And I knew that it was every September. Every September, every time I knew, the sixth, I have these visions. He comes in many separate ways. And now I begin to notice last year, ah, it's not only September. Somewhere he just comes. It's like bonus. Bonus. Are we clear? Are we clear? So you learn one thing. Whose voice is this that speaks to me? Whose voice is this? They are planning. They are planning. Do you get this? So you must understand such. Never stuck with one thing. That's why now it's sevenfold Holy Spirit. It's seven. Sevenfold Holy. Holy Spirit. Now when he comes upon you, he says you will heal the sick, you will cast out demons. That's the signs that you follow you. Speak in unknown tongues, you'll drink poison, you'll never harm you, you'll pick up snakes, and they'll never harm you. You get it, no? Are we going somewhere? So it's sevenfold. Are we clear? Now some, it's three and a half. They cast out demons, they heal the sick, they speak in unknown tongues. Further, they can't go. They can't go further. Are we going somewhere? So it's sevenfold. When you have that perfection on you, let him work as he wills. Let him work as he, as he wills. Do we love Jesus Christ? So those appearances, you must get it. That's how it happens. Do we love Jesus Christ? Some, you see a book, you saw a book coming. And when you saw a book coming, you heard the voice. Yeah. That voice came, spoke from within the book. But that voice, you, can, you expect it's the book, it's the Bible, but you hear the voice of someone standing before you. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Am I right? And it's only, not only one who saw that. And you could identify that this is the voice from Lisa Daniel. But it's the book. You expected the reading, but you had, the, you had the voice. What was that? So coming in another form. Coming in another, another form. So it's many. That's why now, to some, it's still parables. That's why we say dreams are complicated. Visions are complicated. Don't run to explain them before. Let the revealer explain. Are we clear? Because they can come to you as a parable. A parable is the language which was spoken before the world began. So when the world has begun, you see pictures of the world. But because it's a parable, take it to before the world began. Take it to before the world, the world began. Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? I'm going to minister, and these formations must come to you today. Are we clear? This many separate, this many separate ways must come to you. That's the impartation you came for today. Are we clear? Are we clear? Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? Every year, every month, every, it says they bear fruits. Don't forget, those fruits are not the same. God lifts up the standard every time. Are we clear? Are we clear? Yet, he remains the same. Yesterday, today, and he does not change. So as I minister to you now, just believe those appearances coming to you. Let the door be opened. So lift up your heads, all your gates. And let the king of glory come in. Let the king of glory come. Come in. Once the king of glory comes in, you go. In my father's house, there are many mansions. You are the mansions. You are not an ordinary house. You are what? You are a a mansion. Tell your neighbor, say, how are you mansion? Say, how are you mansion? 
Say, how are you, blessed mansion? Say, how are you, blessed mansion? How are you, blessed mansion? Amen. When he comes in, it's like the same Bible that you eat. It also embitters your tummy. It's the weight coming into you. So the dividing line is no more there. The gates are opened. Save God with your spirit. <laughs> Save God with your, with your blessed view. As I'm going to minister right now, no one thing God is going to give you what they get here. You are part of us. You're not too far. God is here to bless you. So as I minister here, I expect your miracle. As I minister here, expect what God gives you today. His own appearance. God directly giving out to you today and keep it for his glory. God is with you as we are watching in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So just believe. Uh, let this conference be something different in your life. When you go back to your church, some of you, when you go back, when you go back to your work, when you go back wherever you'll be going, see yourself operating in a different way. Amen. Amen. See yourself operating in a, in a different way. Operating in a different way, it's in a unique way. So you're going to operate with an appearance that is strange. A different appearance, totally from the one that you've seen before. Amen. 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 So let your speech be seasoned with salt. Pray for me. So if I'm seasoned with salt, I can be op able to open a mystery into your life. That's why he says, pray for me so that God can open a door into the mystery. But people who pray must be those whose speech is seasoned with salt. And people who pray for me must be those who are fully dressed with the armor of God. So that when they pray for me, they can pray for me with every type of prayer. With many separate revelations, they can pray for me. With many separate, so every type, all types, different types of prayers. So when they pray, if this page needs another type, it will be opened by this type. If this door needs this type of a key, you won't use the other key that you use from another door. You have to use a key for this door. So in many separate ways. So let those doors be opened. All of them. So pray for me so that God can open a door into the mystery. If I'm seasoned with salt, I'll be able to open a door in you. So many tried... To, to, to speak against what I'm teaching now, but you must understand, if I say now God is opening the book in your stomach, so I'm opening in your stomach, I'm opening, I'm opening. if my speech is seasoned with salt, you feel it in your stomach. Are we clear? Are we clear? Are we clear? Do we love Jesus Christ? If I say it's opening on the back, because I'm seasoned, it must be. If I say those stripes on the back must open. So, why? Because now it's opening. If I'm seasoned, if I'm well dressed with the arm of God, I must reveal those mysteries. Are we going somewhere? I must reveal what? Those mysteries to you. You never thought you can have that. But when one begins to speak, you find it happening in you. If you're able to open your season with thought, then you can speak with the divine in the person. The divine is above human. There's human and there's divine. So you speak to the divine. The divine can react. Are we clear? Do we love Jesus Christ? So use these words. Use these words. Use this. And God will use it even more than the way he used me. You will do greater. You will do what? You will do greater. Use them. I mean, if Jesus teaches, why don't you use what Jesus still taught? And he will give you more than. That's why he says, you'll do what I've done and even greater. Use them. Do we love Jesus Christ? So I'm going to minister right now. Just believe it's the Lord who blesses you right now. Amen. 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 Those who want to confess, can we confess for Sunday after Sunday service? Huh? After Sunday service, ne? Amen. Unless if you are, you are going 
today we are going far, but if you don't, let's reserve it for tomorrow. Is it fine? Don't worry, you won't die before tomorrow's service ends. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You won't die before tomorrow's service. So if you want to confess, so can we reserve it for tomorrow? Unless if you are, have serious, you know, journey you have to leave after the service, then we can give you a chance. But now, if you don't, let's do it for tomorrow. Is it fine? Is it fine? Love you. Love you. Amen. Amen. Say love you, Jesus. There's someone, there's an object in your heart. It's like it's eating in your heart. And that's a person I'm talking about. It's like in your heart, it eats. I'm just preparing you for confession. When the thing moves in your heart, it's like inside you feel pain in the, at the, right in the middle of your heart. And now you feel weak. Sometimes you like have a visitation of stroke. So you can prepare yourself for, for confession. And the other one, it's inside your stomach. The same thing that I explained in the heart, it does the same thing in the stomach. It eats in the stomach, and in the stomach, it will be like heartbeat. You'd feel heartbeat in your stomach. So prepare yourself for confession.
बिकॉज देखो
alcohol and smoking. He is suffering from addiction of alcohol and smoking. Can go and test. I was undermining you. I was not listening to you. Therefore, I apologize. I'm sorry. For so utwele lele nyazo leki bile lelo na kikopela tsuarelo. I'm sorry for not listening to you and undermining you. I was not listening. I was focusing on the things of the world. Show me. So no so today. I was busy spunking uh, heroin together with my friends and I did not listen to you. 
Therefore, I apologize. It shall never happen to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let them drink again their addiction. After that, you might test them. Can you drink? Yeah, go test him. Go test. God loves you, eh? Go test him. Stand up. We are fine, Paul. Huh? I'm feeling fine. You're feeling fine? Yes. You said you had an accident today. Yes, today is our cancer yeah. was coming. So the body was still painful? My bone, I mean, my, my, my body was... By the time it was not that painful. And I said, because I'm from far. But now, how's the pain now? Now it's okay. It's okay, ne? Yes. Your free code is with you. God loves you.
Kunz. She is saying that she's suffering with cunt. She's suffering with cunt. The Lord is cutting your cunt. The Lord is cutting your cunt. Receives operation. Yeah. Operation on your cunt. In Jesus' name. Do you feel the pain? No. Do you feel the pain? No, Papa, but I'm not able to, to, to wear any shoe because Yeah, of don't the... worry. Don't worry. Look. Look. Operation. Ah. Operation. Mm. Operation. Mm. She must wear heels and everything, not take his ne? Yeah, Papa, and I've found a lot of heels. I can't wear them. You can't wear them, ne? You're going to wear them today. So she can't wait, take his full time as a woman. You don't can't exercise coming to church. Save spiritual operation. The Lord is cutting your horns. Check. How do you feel now? It's no longer painful, Papa. Yeah? It's no longer painful. So tomorrow when you come to church, I don't want to see those techies, okay? Yeah. Come with your high heels, ne? Yes, Papa. Let's live for Jesus.
no, no, no. We want to test the.
I have sinus and terrible headache. Breathing in and out, breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. Hello? 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 It's getting better. Yeah. Breathing in and out. Now it's clear. Huh? It's clear now that it's, I'm left. I can't feel it. And the sinus? They've gone. They're gone. God is with you. Bless you. He is suffering from sinuses as well as stomach pains. Most of the time is if I eat pap or vet broth. I know hopefully you know. Yeah, no, it's all right. It's all right. Bless yeah. you. Let's go for Jesus. Nalidi sinus and stomach sara sara she is she's saying that she's suffering from sinuses as well as stomach ulcers no. No. i beg your pardon she is suffering from sinuses and her stomach swells Our father just performed a sign upon her from above and she's now healed. She's saying that she's fine and the blockage, the blockage is gone. Let's lap hands for Jesus Christ. Daddy, we've got our two brothers here. We've got Jacob. Uh, after testing him, he's saying the um, cigarette is bad. It's not like testing the same. And with 
uh, Daniel, it causes him to vomit and it's tasteless. Okay, so for how long have you been smoking? Since 2005. What were you smoking? Peter. Just a cigarette. And then you? And now I was smoking cigarette, Zolo, and Yaupe. Since when? Uh, 2006. Okay, just drink up. He's saying that he started smoking in the year 2006. He was smoking cigarette, Dacha, and heroin. The other brother said that he started smoking in the year 2005. He was smoking only cigarette. Okay. I can't feel the taste. I can't feel the taste. It's no longer that we used to smoke. Mm -mm. Yeah, let's clap for Jesus. Try our brother there. I test less. Huh? Test less. So it the same tasteless. like you. Let's clap for Jesus. You're free. He's saying that he's suffering from sinuses. It's opened. My nose is free. <laughs> Let's lap hands for Jesus.
vomiting and she has stomach pain. I declare all of you blessed. Let's come to confessions and finish in Jesus' name. from Go Val Reefs number one. My name is Sarah Kwekwe. Kikupo confessa kata ba ya papa na ibuya ya ya saite le karon strow kule pe lole ten jumpe mona. Um, may I please confess regarding the prophecy that our father gave regarding a person who was um, hit by a stroke and having pains in their heart? This started in the month of May when I came here and I told my father regarding the problem that I had. Papa, I'm going to tell you that 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 I'm going to t
kerekeng ya ka somebody of my church o kwa tile ke taba go ke tle mo papa ke sa mbulela yana ke my father prayed for me and when I went back to the church where I am attending someone asked me they were offended they asked me why I came here so ke go botsagala ka go ke tle mona ke ke sa ke sa mbulela o kwa tile ke taba yo so ka ba le problem ya o tswara ke ntheno after this thing ya go ke tle mona ke re papa ng rapel Therefore, I am asking for forgiveness for not telling them that I was coming here because they were offended that I came here and I did not tell them. So it's, it's offense because you came here for prayer. Oh, so it, it affected your heart. It was like something is eating in your heart. It has affected my heart um, to a point where I even wanted to leave the church and the Holy Spirit prompted me not to leave the church. He said I must continue to pray. So Something like Alzheimer, hyperkulela, get go doctor. Now it has affected me a lot in a way that I am suffering from dizziness. I also have something in my an object in my stomach. It's like eating me up. And when I go to the doctors, they can't find and or see anything. Thank you very much. How's the pain now? Check the pain. How's the pain? Yeah, I forgive you. The spirit of Christ forgives you. You're forgiven. Let's after, live for Jesus. Now, after our father prayed for her, she was saying that she doesn't feel the pain anymore. She's now healed. Let's lap hands for Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, everyone, and I also like to greet my father in the wonderful name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Nandi bitola ka ke usmegi ke toko mafiking. My name is Sister Megi. I am from Mafiking. Ke tlelele mo ana. I came so, with my child. Santa papa ke kopa maitshorelo Firstly my father I would like to ask for your forgiveness for both of us me maitshorelo antla ke tlile kwano and then ko nne ke tswa teng ha ba tlhaloganye the anointing of the house I would like to ask for forgiveness for the both of us. Firstly, I would like to apologize um, for the fact that where I am coming from, they don't like the fact that I come here to Rabboni Center Ministries. So, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? Then, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? Now, going back to my thinking, I had a problem with the fact that um, there was a ministration of the power or signs from above that were happening to show that indeed I, come, I came to Rabboni Center Ministries. So, Sassan and Sidirahala Kileka Kati Wamodi Sevisin Zadikzakereke. What happened is that I was cut from the 
from serving in the services. So, it's a horrible plan, a horrible cut, but the kisa involve you in modulun zakerek. Not that uh, they told me to not to do or serve anymore, but um, I just realized that I was no longer involved in some activities that were taking place. So, I, I, I took offense I also took offense from the way they were speaking about our father. So, 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 I became somehow angry. And what I've also realized or learned is that I also became angry. So, from that time, then since then, it became hard for me to come back to Raboni. Okay. I started knowing the church or Raboni Center Ministries the time when our father came to Mafikeng. So, Liko go to and also in Sitlochelo. Then mo hajita always nagina le problem e ke phone hore ke ke rapel le hore ke khone go fitla. Now when I wanted to come here I had to phone the prayer line for asking for prayers um for me to make it to come to Raboni Center Ministries. Always say ke tla kwa no nagina le problem ya ya transport. Every time I wanted to come here, I had a problem with transportation. My cars were just getting messed up. So, I disobeyed you. You commanded me to open a ministry. Another thing is that I disobeyed you, my father, when you commanded me to go and open a ministry. You gave me all the things in You gave me everything that I was supposed to use and how I was to use them. Unfortunately, on the second day of ministering, Kileka Kikrile stands. Um, unfortunately, on the second day of ministering, I found a land. Then I anointed as I was supposed to do it. And I anointed as I was supposed to. Unfortunately, the, the owner of that uh, place came and then wanted this, the place back. And then thereafter, even the, 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 the other thing, everything went well. And then the problem was that I, I got the sheep, the flock. I dedicated to God. It is a remote rural area where I am. So there was a lot of need. On my uh, servicing, I now disobeyed and then I did, I did skills than to preach. Then that skills made them to fight. So they cannot come to, to church at, first, at regular basis and together. So I came here, Papa, to ask for forgiveness from you and to God. I forgive you, the spirit of Christ forgives you. I forgive you, every evil of offense, you're no more. In Jesus' name, amen. God is with you, you're forgiven. My name is Rapula, I am from Botswana, Tamaha.
na kitlo ko confirm a propensity bo gore tsa someone ona le pain mo pilong le ona le sense stroke I came to um, confirm the prophecy that was given by our father when he said that there was someone who was attacked by a stroke on the side and also having pains in their heart. Uh, and then ke confess ga pe ka decide at ken kena le pain yone mo pilung le le signs on the stroke le bo la melena mo lelo le na mo I came to confess regarding the pain that I have in my heart and also my arm would become numb. Uh I get a confessioning uh get a confess a wrong connection. And my arm will also um get heat or feel heat. And I, another thing is that I came to confess regarding bad connection. Uh can I pick a like a I went to a certain place um, for accommodation. Pardon me. I had accommodated someone. And then, Rio in Elimoruti Mona Tawala Bushula Kapapa. And that uh, particular person was a man of God who started talking bad about our father, Professor Lisekho Daniel. Um, I never liked um, what he said. I never liked what he I even asked him that um, since he is a man of God, what is he doing with his ministry because it's not running well? Now, in defending my father, that's where I started experiencing pains in my heart. Now, regarding the heat that I would experience on my arm, in the year 2014, I had a dream where I was um, being bitten by a dog. And the following day when I woke up, I started um, realizing that I had signs of stroke. Therefore, I am now asking for forgiveness from my father as well as the Holy Spirit. I forgive you. The Spirit of Christ forgive you. Every evil behind this, I command to go. Every evil caused by offense, you're no more in Jesus' name. How's that mean? Yeah? It's gone, eh? Amen. You're free. Let's love for Jesus. He was saying that the pain is gone immediately after our father ministered the word of life upon him. Uh, I am Pastor Titus Trefu. My from home I'm coming from Kopane. By now I'm I'm at Venda. Uh, firstly, I want to uh, confess that when I saw the news o, 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 on the newspaper about Papa. I've been one of those who have criticized him. I ask forgiveness on that. I've got a problem. God, I have seen God in my life, and I've been told he have called me. I started to work in a home cell at my house under uh, the church where I was fellowshipping. But because of the statements from the demons when I was praying from the people, we end up having a, a, a fight with the pastor. And it's when, after when he have told me that I have to leave the job where I was working, he's about to release me. Then, because of not understanding each other, he end up not re releasing me. I went to another pastor in another country. Then he became angry. 
he said, let me tell that pastor to release me. Is there where I've just decided that is better? Due to that, they have told me that God have told me to vendor. I open ministry in vendor. But since that time, things are not okay with me. Even the marriage is not okay with me. And I've realized after that, I have made a mistake also. The way I have talked to him, even though he was wrong, is the man of God. I ask forgiveness on that. And the other thing, I ask Papa to train me, to take me to be his child. As by now, I'm running the ministry without anyone to help me or to guide me, without a proper training. That's all. And the other thing, I, I've been diagnosed with sugar diabetes. God loves you. God is with you. You're welcome. I forgive you. The Spirit of Christ forgives you. This shall never happen to you anymore. You're blessed in Jesus' name. You're welcome. God is with you. God is with you. Blessed viewer, we thank you for tuning in. We thank God for this wonderful service. We thank God for teaching us and giving us the word from above. Blessed viewer, it's time for us to hold on the word and hear our master by his voice. We get lost. We don't hear him by his voice. God is here to bless us with his word living on the inside of us so that when we speak, it's no longer us, but it's Christ. I thank you for tuning in. God is here to bless you as I minister to everybody and now minister to you. This is just a simple prayer. The word of the Lord has come. It has come under the roof to bless you, to raise you up, to restore you, to remove every limitation, to remove all that stand against you. The word of the Lord has come to remove every evil plan against you in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, the word of the Lord is cleaning up. The word of the Lord purifies you. The word of the Lord has come to give you life from above. Even those who are serving, those who are serving in ministries, the apostles, pastors, evangelists, uh, prophets, I say right now, the word of the Lord has come to restore and kindle your ministry to light. I say right now, light is shining on you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Right now, the word of the Lord has come. The appearance of the Lord has come into your life. The word has overshadowed you. Greater things will begin to happen through you. I declare you blessed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All evil, all darkness shall never come upon you. As the word of the Lord has come, every sickness I declare gone in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As the centurion spoke and just said, that's the word, and my servant will be healed. The word of the Lord has come. I declare your body has prospered just as even your soul has prospered. You have now prospered in every way in Jesus' name. Do send in your testimonies right now. We are going, we are, we are going to close right now. The word of the Lord has come upon you. There's a number appearing on your screen there. Send in your testimonies. Let's celebrate together what the Lord has done in your life. Let's meet this morning. Sunday will be life again. God is here to raise you up. I'll be giving anointing all to everyone. Everyone staying far. Distance is not a barrier. God is here to bless you. God is here to keep you. We'll be trained together. We'll be blessed together. Jesus is here to bring us together, to gather us and not to scatter us. I declare you blessed. Thank you for tuning in. We love you. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.